Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Pac-Man World. So we're about halfway done through the ruined zone, so we'll be doing the rest of it in this part. So huzzah for that. Oh, I'm literally, I'm literally pitching a tent at the very idea. I love the old school grid-based platforming. <laughs> well, I was going to say, because I know like we're talking as far back as part one uh, about the game like, having analog control, but it does seem like things are built on blocks here. Yeah, yeah. So, does Pac-Man just kind of snap no, he does not. to a specific... Okay, I was going to say. I think that's more just due to the age of, like, the game and how it was made. Well, no, I also think it's because they aesthetically want to pay tribute to the maze-like design of OG Pac-Man. It's not even as complicated as that. Um, a lot of older platformers from this era were built around grids because it was just easier for players and designers to calculate jumps that way. All of Tomb Raider is based on a grid design. You know, Tomb Raider is also fucking mid nineties. Well, yeah, this uh, is Pac Man also World is 90s, no Pac Man. No Pac Man World is late nineties, ninety nine. At this point, we've already had a plethora three D platformers on both this and the N sixty four and Crash Bandicoot. Plethora. plethora. No, no, I'm 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 conjuring a spell, Ted. <laughs> The point is, it was um, it was easier to calculate jump length when you were working with a grid. So, uh, level de level designers would have a working idea of what jumps the player would be expected to do in what situation. And again, the only reason why the only reason why I think it's an aesthetical choice is because when you think Pac Man, you think of you think of grids, you think of mazes. Yeah. And I think they didn't want to stray too far from that. Right, but this kind of game design was pretty common in, in 3D platformers. The, um, I remember thinking that it was a really big jump when Crash Bandicoot 2 started to actually make angled pits. <laughs> instead of just... <laughs> oh my god, this game's amazing. Instead of just one pit that, uh, that you would have to jump over it would be an angled pit that that covered like half of the hallway and you would have to swerve around it um that was the kind of stuff you didn't really see in crash bandicoot one because crash bandicoot one was designed entirely with d-pad in mind and was a very early 3d platformer so the design is just that basic um whew. In, in in the year of our Lord 2024, it is it really makes me feel old to to talk about how uh, uh, to talk about level design evolution and platformers because a lot of the stuff uh, in it, it revolves around the fact that stuff that we that we take for granted in video game control now wasn't always and was in fact stuff that you could count on players not knowing how to do it. <laughs> But then, just the other day, I played the Street Fighter Four, the Street Fighter Six demo, and one of the first fucking things they give you is a tutorial on how to move in 3D. It's <laughs> 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 like, hey, walk through these glowing spaces and then come back to me. Like, to be fair, like I think dedicated Street Fighter players would probably need something like that because they're not used to moving in three dimensional that's spaces. That's what I said on Twitter yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, so I don't think it's that far from. Yeah, I really need to get the full game. Uh -uh. It's like you know. Wait, they had a tutorial for moving 3D for like what? The hub world? Uh, yes. The main, the main player mode. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the Street Fighter Six has this has this world tour mode, which is basically um, Yakuza with Street Fighter fighting as the combat system. So, you know. <laughs> I'm interested to play it. <laughs> also, you get to make your own character in a kind of like Soul Calibur, Dragon Ball, Xenoverse kind of way. And you can make some abominations in that. Oh, yes, you can. Also, uh, like, the game takes into account the size of your character and the length of your limbs for, um,. Oh, God. <laughs> so I just imagine a lot of alien abominations with, with that are like really small body but with really long limbs. <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember like uh, Golden Eye, like the gorilla mode with yeah. the long arms? Imagine that, but it's Joe Biden. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh no. Ah. <laughs> uh. 
That was worth it for the stun silence alone. Whew. I'm going to I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that the uh, player created avatars are, are are abandoned tournaments. Yes, they are. <laughs> yeah. yeah, eventually there would just be a best one found. And then... <laughs> you say that like obviously like thinking in terms of pure gameplay. Yeah, there's probably advantages to the character created uh, character, but I also think you could probably fuck with people mentally with like how out there your creation could be. Okay, not only do you have to work with this extreme pressure of being at a high level tournament, but it turns out that your opponent's playing as your ex girlfriend on the stage, which you know, <laughs> also does a lot. Of mess with <laughs> your opponent's playing as Miss Pac Man. <laughs> no, she's dead. Remember. Well, actually, we don't know what happened to her. No. She's just not alive. No, you anymore. don't. You don't understand. Capcom has finally done it. They've given us the opportunity to play as bad box art Pac-Man in a Street Fighter game. I've waited for this. <laughs> uh, now, in a uh, Street Fighter Cross Tekken, uh, the Pac-Man that they used was not this model, right? It was the weird. Wait, what? 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 No, Pac-Man was like in a in a mech. He was in the Mokujin mech. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. I was going to say. But they were also using his different, like, I think it was like the Pac-Man World 3 design or whatever it was, or whatever, what era of Pac-Man was it where he had, like, the blue eyes and, like, the, oh, the weird the, sneakers? Uh, the Ghostly Adventures. No, he that was, was before was... Ghostly Adventures. Okay, that's what it was. I believe. Because Ghostly Adventures was, like, post-Wii U era. Uh... It wasn't really until Pac-Man arrived in Smash that the classic Pac-Man design came back into style. I mean, I don't think Ghostly Adventures was ever in style. Um... It that. was it was the new thing, so it's what the marketing people would 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 choose to use because it's advertising for the new thing. I tried. I really did try to play some of that game, and it. I, I just I couldn't. What, um, what Street Fighter Cross Tekken? No, pa uh, no, sorry, not play a game. Uh, watch the TV show. I've he I've heard that the that the the games are fine, like not amazing, but like perfectly serviceable. Um, they seem to have. They seem. What are the What are the ghostly adventures games like again? They're they're, they're just like three D platformers. Three um, D platformers. Do, are they like? They action? borrow a lot from Mario Galaxy. It looks oh, like with okay. like different little power ups that give you specific abilities for that one level oh, okay. and whatever. Um, like apparently, as far as I can tell, they are inoffensive games. But the TV show is is bad. It is. It is not good. Uh, don't watch it. There is uh, a pacleration of independence. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> that is just wrong. There is a professor whose name is Circumference. <laughs> <laughs> that one's actually kind of clever. No, yeah, I yeah, that one. I, I can get behind that one. Yeah, just don't ask what he's calling on a Friday night. Yeah. Um. Oh. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! I don't even know if I'm thinking of the one that you're thinking of. Oh, pack! Can you pack? <laughs> it's time to go get divorced. Oh man. Um. But good news, we saved our dog. <laughs> Holy shit! You can talk. Oh, pack, buddy! Just shoots off into space. <laughs> Got a weird fucking dog there, Pac-Man. You know what we need? We need a Pac-Man Generations. Modern I, Pac I absolutely do not need uh, Pac-Man Generations. Yeah, Pac because, like, who's classic Pac-Man and who's new Pac-Man? Well, obviously, classic Pac-Man is the Pac-Man we're looking at now. And okay. modern Pac-Man is Ghostly Adventures. Because I would, I would argue that eyes. there's three generations of Pac-Man, and classic Pac-Man is, 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 a, is a cheese wedge. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, the point is, what we need is Pac-Man generations, right? So we get we get classic Pac-Man and modern Pac-Man going on a on, on a platforming adventure together through time, and uh, at the end, they fight the Gum Witch from Pac-Man Two. Oh God, you immediately lost me. <laughs> well, and then, no, and then, wait, and wait, then, way to go. No, because what we're looking at right now, this week. In, in in gaming news is Shadow the Hedgehog in Sonic Generations fighting 
fucking Black Doom, who might as well be the Gum Witch, okay? No one fucking likes Black Doom. Yeah, but there's, first off, there's no Shadow the Hedgehog of Pac-Man, uh, which, thank God. Sure there are. Uh, Pac-Man World 3. No, I mean, like, the character Shadow uh, the Hedgehog. Like, yeah, that's no because Pac-Man got to do it himself. Pac-Man Pac got to do it himself. Also, there's Pac-Man Jr. Yeah, but that's, like, his literal son, though. No, be be better idea. Kazuya from Tekken. He's what? the Shadow the Hedgehog of what? Pac Man. Pac -Man? For it. <laughs> what? J j just to be edgy and dark and all that. He's not a Pac Man character, though. Like, we need specifically someone or something in the Pac Man world that acts as a Shadow the Hedgehog for Pac Man. Talk Man? Talk Man? <laughs> no, well, original uh... talk, talk Man. Oh, Puck Man. Puck Man? Puck Man, yeah. Puck Man. What? Puck Pucku. Puck what? Man is the Japanese name or the original name for Jack for Pac Man, which they changed because You can um, easily uh uh alter the sign to say something else. Oh. Duck Man. Yes, Duck Man. Yeah, yeah they really had animosity towards ducks. Yeah, you get rid of that bottom part of the P and yeah, it's just Duck Man where it's just Yeah. Like, if people get that wrong all the time. It's 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 very strange. <laughs> okay, well. Can we talk about Sir Comforts again? <laughs> no. <laughs> Absolutely not. But can you time pet... To go to the, time the, to, can but, you pet the dog? No, you cannot. Uh, damn. You can butt bounce the dog. What a garbage fucking remake. Oh, no. I just realized the compass is okay. also a wedge. So, Anubis Rex, I think is the boss fight from the original yes, game. It is. That mm -hmm. was the most bullshit. It was. It's still the most bullshit, but it's easier here than it was in the original. Yeah, I believe you when you die, you don't go all the way back to the beginning is one of the big changes. It, it's also just that the platforming arrangement during the actual boss fight was... Oh, boy. It sure was a platforming arrangement. Um... Also, I, you know, this is a, a pet peeve of mine that I don't like in any game that has them, but where they have those spikes coming out of the floor, and when you walk into the, the spear shaft, and you're supposed to treat that as if you took damage, it's just like, I walked into a stick, all right? I didn't get hit by the pointy bit. It depends on how fast you're walking into that stick, though, to be fair. Pac-Man is moving at a mild jog at best. He's fine. I forget. In, in Crash Bandicoot 3, could you walk between the spears? Yes, you could. Okay, I thought so. The only parts that hurt you were the pointy bits. <laughs> it looks like here it's it's uh, just a, a big old hurt box. Avoid the stick of doom. Yeah. Anyway, in the original game, the platforming in this boss fight was bullshit. And it was it was an it was an unreasonable difficulty spike in the middle of an otherwise comfortable game. Um, yeah, this is the second boss, you know. Yeah, and this th this version of the boss fight involves a whole lot less bullshit. So, uh... Well, comparatively speaking, like, what are we talking about? I never played the original, okay. so... Uh, let me refresh my memory by pulling up a screenshot here. Okay. An Anubis Rex Pac-Man. Okay, so... In the original game... Uh, there were pits of lava in between these kind of, like these kind of spinny things that you need to move on. Yeah. Yeah, and, and in uh, this version they the thing instead crumples apart. Yes. As you as you do damage to him, so you're not dealing with this platforming the entire boss fight. Well when I say there were pits of lava in between the spinny things, I mean the spinny things were the only things that you had to land on. So you also had to make uh, a jump to a pretty Ooh, wow. pretty damn small platform. So you, you had to not only spin on these things, but you could only land on these things, from yeah. what I understand. Yes. So you see here how he knocked away some of the blocks, and now you have a yeah. little bit less breathing room. There was just nothing here other than the spinny platforms. So, like, you basically could only jump to dodge, but if you shot two projectiles like that, then fuck you, I guess. Um... Haha, <laughs> Shane A. Nani. In any case, I am super glad that they improved the boss fight. <laughs> Ah. Now you said it's still pretty, like tough though, and it, how so? Because it looks like you're having pretty comfortable time, all things considered. Well, he's also taken a lot of damage so far. Yeah, I've 
brute forcing it a little bit. Um, but yeah, if you fall into, oops. But yeah, if you <laughs> fall into the lava, you have to start the, basically the entire boss over again. Uh, it's hard to tell where he's shooting sometimes. Like yeah. shooting the wind tornadoes, and it's hard to tell exactly what plane they're on. No, the tornadoes seem to always be in the background. It's hard to tell when they're turning, though. It's like it's a little bit easier to tell when the. Um, yeah, I, I'm only making reference to that because that's like the third time I've seen the tornado being shot from that angle, and it just seems to immediately drift into the background, becoming harmless. Yeah, well, the, the projectiles do sort of swerve at odd angles, but. Yeah. It's not. It's not the end of the world. Like it's not the hardest boss fight ever. It's just a big difficulty spike compared to the rest of the game. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say it's about on par with the final boss at this point. Did they change the final boss as well, I think? A little bit. Yeah. Well, that's a wrap. Yeah, you get it, because... That's a pack. No, no, it's a wrap. Because mummy... No, it's Pac-Man. Mummy. Mummies. No, Pac-Man. It's a mummy... No, that's Pac-Man. Uh, Pac-Rap? Fucking idiot. Coming to a theater <laughs> you? Uh, why do I even and bother? And we should write for, for Pac-Man in the Ghostly Adventures. We could probably do a better job even at this level of quality. Okay, so... Dude, they couldn't have chosen a better image for a peach. It's. I think it is just the emoji, like straight up. Yeah, <laughs> that's just that's just pink butt cheeks. I've never seen a pink peach before. Why is that the color it goes for? Peaches I've seen are orange. <laughs>